Welcome back everyone. It's Russ Barkley and I have another commentary on ADHD. What a shock. Russ Barkley talks about ADHD. That's right. Just can't shut him up. Today I want to talk to you about the relationship of traumatic brain injuries and ADHD. And I've created what I hope will be an informative PowerPoint for you. I've also put a couple of reviews in the literature or of the literature in my description for this video in case you want to pursue this further. There's a lot of research out there, but luckily there have been a couple of recent reviews to guide us along our way. So let's tee up the PowerPoint, as I like to say, and let's talk about TBI and ADHD. First of all, ADHD has a number of causes or etiologies. I'm going to borrow this graph from Joel Nigg's book from many years ago, but the graph still applies today. Uh, and it shows you a variety of causes for ADHD, but the most common of which is genetics, particularly inheritance of genes for ADHD, but also, as I note on this slide in the lower right side, one can have new mutations that occur in a child that lead to ADHD where those mutations are not present in the parent's DNA except in their eggs and sperm, which is where the new mutations occur and get passed on to their children. It's been estimated that upwards of about 10% of all ADHD are these new or de novo cases. Okay, we don't want to talk about that. Just understand that about two-thirds or 70% of ADHD results from genetics. Now, look in the graph over at the pie chart and you'll see a variety of other causes that can lead to ADHD, particularly prematurity and low birth weight. That has been documented repeatedly as a risk factor that increases the odds of ADHD in a child born of such a pregnancy. But you can see also that there's postnatal exposure to various toxins in the environment. The most commonly documented are lead and alcohol, but there are others as well. Prenatal infections can also increase the risk of ADHD, that is prenatal exposure of the mother to infections. And then pre and perinatal complications of all sorts can also increase risk for ADHD in the offspring. And now look at the very top of our pie chart here, postnatal damage. And among the most common damages to the developing brain to occur in children and even adults is traumatic brain injury. So let's have a look at how TBI relates to ADHD and vice versa. So understand that while ADHD is largely a genetic and neurologic disorder, a small percentage of cases of ADHD could be arising from traumatic brain injury. Okay, so here's our brain over here on the left, and I'm gonna illustrate what tends to happen with these brain injuries. First of all, the most common forms of brain injury are where the individual is moving, and so is their brain, and then they hit something. Think about a car accident, think about a, a cycling accident or a motorcycle accident. The individual's brain is moving along as in a car, and then suddenly impacts a stationary object like a tree, or the individual may encounter an object moving in the opposite direction, it makes it even worse because of the forces involved, as you might see in a car collision. And what happens is that when this brain, which is moving and accelerating, then hits a stationary or counter moving object, the brain bounces back and forth in the skull and that creates strong shearing forces on this mushy brain, kind of like jello, and the brain is moving back and forward, and that bouncing around tears the neurons. And this shearing of neurons is especially likely at the base of the skull, underneath the frontal lobes, at the orbital part right behind the forehead, as you could imagine, and because of the bouncing around, you can get a contra-coup injury at the opposite part of the brain in the back. In this case, 
the occipital cortex at the back of the skull, and the cerebellum. Now, what's interesting about this, as you understand if you watch this channel for uh, the various videos that I post here, you know that the frontal lobes, particularly the prefrontal area, and the cerebellum are both involved in ADHD etiology within the brain. So you can see then that this kind of TBI, particularly the acceleration deceleration forms of trauma, can indeed injure and are more likely to injure parts of the brain that are implicated in ADHD. So it makes sense that TBI might lead to ADHD. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. So we have these traumatic brain injuries, some of which are stationary. You get bonked on the head by somebody, or you happen to be boxing and you get hit in the frontal area of the brain. But the most common are the deceleration or the acceleration deceleration injuries. So you've got that brain in motion that hits a stationary or counter moving object. It bounces the brain around, shearing brain tissue, particularly in areas of the brain involved in ADHD. And that is what this slide is explaining to you. And then you get damage, especially to the prefrontal area, occipital lobe, and cerebellum. All right, now how does TBI relate to ADHD? Well, let's have a look. There's traumatic brain injury over here on the left, and we have different forms or severity of TBI. We have mild forms like concussions that you might experience in low speed crashes or collisions or in sports injuries or falls. So concussion tends to be classified under mild TBI and that does not seem to lead to ADHD according to some of the most recent reviews and meta-analyses of the literature. So mild TBI, probably not going to lead to ADHD. What about moderate TBI? Well, again, the reviews suggest that that's probably not going to lead to ADHD at, say, one and two year follow-up after the traumatic brain injury. However, severe TBI, which is often severe enough to warrant hospitalization, and the individual may indeed be unconscious for a while, and there is clear documentation on neuroimaging of trauma to the brain, severe TBI does have a relationship to ADHD. So that people who experience severe TBI, both children and adults, are two and a half to 6.7 times more likely to then have ADHD at one and two year follow-up. So uh, the relationship between TBI causing ADHD appears to be primarily best documented for severe forms of TBI. Now, what about pre-existing ADHD in those who experience TBI? Well, it's about 16%, which is about two to three times more common than in the general population. But you can see that the vast majority of people who are experiencing TBI don't have pre-injury ADHD, but some of them do. Now, why is that important? because we also have documentation that ADHD leads to an increase in risk for TBI, especially the milder forms of TBI, such as concussions. And you can imagine why. People with ADHD, kids and adults, are more prone to accidental injuries, bumps, falls, scrapes, and so on. And as a result, they're more likely to get concussions or mild forms of TBI. This is also true in sports injuries. So ADHD can increase risk for TBI, but it's usually of the milder sort, which isn't going to necessarily create new ADHD or worse ADHD in the case of pre-existing ADHD, but it could, right? So we know that even milder forms of concussion can worsen attention and working memory, even if they don't lead to full-blown clinical ADHD. But in this case, the individual already has ADHD. That's increasing the risk for, <clears throat> excuse me, mild TBI, especially concussion. By the way, notice there is a study out of China that shows that this risk 
for greater accidental injury is also true of the parents of children with ADHD. Now, why would that be the case? Well, you know the answer. If you've been a long-term viewer of this channel, the parents are also likely to have ADHD given the genetics of these relationships. So pretty easy to understand why that finding exists. Finally, I do wish to point out that there's a small literature. It's not very large, not always consistent, but it suggests that using stimulant medication after traumatic brain injuries can effectively help manage some of the neurocognitive and executive deficits that arise from the TBI and particularly those related to ADHD, such as executive function deficits. So if an individual gets a TBI, particularly a severe one, and that individual goes on to get ADHD or other cognitive deficits, the use of stimulant medication might be indicated in those individuals. So that could help them not only with their recovery, but in longer term management if those cognitive deficits are persistent. So, so there you have it, folks. I hope that you found this review useful to you and uh, informative about these relationships and that you can understand that one non-genetic cause of ADHD might be severe TBI, particularly that cumulative risk we all have across our lifespans of at some point possibly having a TBI. So severe TBI definitely increases risk for ADHD subsequently, but ADHD increases risk for mild TBIs over time as well. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me on this channel. I hope that you found this video to be very useful to you. Join me again next week for another commentary on ADHD, as well as for my Saturday research reviews. As always, if you're not a subscriber, think about hitting that subscribe button. If you are, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching these videos. And again, if you know someone who could benefit from the information I post here, please recommend this channel to them. Okay, everybody, take care, live well, be well, and bye for now.